Hi. Hi. Give it up for stage left band over there just rocking away. Love you guys. Sounded magical. Or SLB, as our as hipsters call you. Stage left band, SLB. Or slib, if we're in too much of a hurry, just slib. Wanna see slib at os. That's how we roll. Sounding good. So how's everybody doing tonight? Good. I'm doing I'm doing uh pretty good myself, you know, as a uh Openly lesbian woman who recently gotten engaged, hearing about, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. You know, the whole thing about Doma being struck down and Prop 8 being ruled unconstitutional. Whew. I gotta tell you, if I was any more out and proud, I would be up here in a three piece rainbow suit, yeah. painting hot pink pentagrams on the wall, and summoning the spirit of Richard Simmons, and we'd all be sweating to the oldies. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. But that's okay. I know, I know, some of you may not agree with gay marriage, so I won't do that. I respect that. I can respect all opinions, and I love everybody, except Fred Phelps from the Westboro Baptist Church. They can burn in hell. But other than that, come on. I mean, you cannot be that full of hate and still be okay. I mean, seriously. But as a comedian, I have to admit, I don't want them to stop, because that is just hours of material. Seriously. Like, the other day, I got bored at work, and, and I wrote a, a new joke about it. You want me to hear it? Okay, so... So Fred Phelps walks into a bar and the bartender says, the usual, sweetie, that is comedy gold. Because that, I mean, denial, I'm just saying. So, you know, hearing that makes me just about as happy as a buccaneer with a bottle of beer. And, you know, and you can borrow that, which I, I know this is a true feeling because that was me a couple of weeks ago. Because I was, you know, went to the beach. It was a good time. It was our, uh, our annual female only kind of thing. I talked about it before the, the Bob trip. Just ask me about it later. And it was fun. And my friend Alicia went with us this time. So needless to say, the festivities started the night before we actually went to Galveston to the beach. Because like the thing you have to understand about me and Alicia is every time I get in her truck, something horrible happens. Okay, Everything from a dead battery to us accidentally running into the car parked next to us because we thought it'd be funny to pretend to speed out of the parking lot after watching Fast and Furious. Not a good idea. It's okay. We left a note. It's all right. We left Russ's name in the note, but we left a note. That's what that was about. And uh, so, no, we really did leave a note. So, you know, needless to say, when I get in her truck, bad stuff happens. She gets nervous. So I live out in the boonies, very dark, kind of long driveway. So she's backing out because... Thursday night, before we go to Galveston, we decide we want Denny's for some ungodly reason. So we're going, she's backing out, and she's telling me, okay, look on your side and make sure I'm not going to back into anything. So I'm like, okay, you're clear, you're clear, you're clear, boom! Now let me explain something. The tree was on her side, all right? It was clear over, not so much. So of course, she, she gets out to assess the damage, and some of you may be thinking, I wonder if she put it in part. Well, let me just clear that up. No, no. She did not. So she gets out, and I'm sitting in the passenger seat, and stuff slowly starts to go by me. Now, I could help, but I decide I'm just going <laughs> to, where are you going? So she decides to grab the wheel and, and the console and, and the tire, just everything but the brake from where she's at, to the point where I'm not making this up. She does one of these. So I'm like, Alicia, you were not a Jedi, get in the truck. <laughs> so we go to Denny's and we're laughing about it and the waitress is like, oh, what's so funny? And we're like, oh, well, she kind of backed into a tree twice. It was a good time. And the waitress says, and I'm not making this up either. She goes, did you try the Jedi mind trick? So apparently that's a thing. So that was good. But then the next day, everything was fine. We went to Galveston where I tested this new theory because I read this article about a theory that states that if you're on a beach before 9 a.m. and drinking rum, that does not make you a drunk, that makes you a pirate. Okay, it wasn't necessarily a theory in an article as much as it was a rotten e-card on the internet, but the research has been done, okay? The research has been done. So that was fun, and, and the Bob trip, you know, it's a bunch of drunken housewives, and basically phrases like, uh, wasty face come up, that was a good one. Um, at one point, somebody said the phrase, if I drink this beer, I will have been drinking for 15 hours consecutively. So that is just good, wholesome family fun for everybody. And it's a good time. You know, so all weekend we take over Galveston. 
But, um, you know, it can be anywhere from like a dozen or so ladies up to like 20 some odd, which if you've never had dinner in a public place with 20 drunken bored housewives, you have not experienced life. Okay. That is, there is still materials that may or may not be missing from a certain restaurant in Galveston. I will not say its name, but if you're missing a helmet restaurant, I don't know where it is. So we don't talk about it, but, um, this year it was, it was good. It was really fun. But it was kind of uh, low attendance. It was only about 10 of us because my cousin, Angie, had to go and get sick and not the kind of sick you get better from. And um, right now, the last I heard, she is in a medically induced coma, basically. Um, she's, you know, just kind of hanging in there. And um, the thing is, a couple of months ago, I went to see her. And she was still up and, and talking. And I'm sitting there thinking, what do you say in, in this situation? I mean, where do you go? What do, what do you do? And we spend all day with her, and the time comes for us to leave. And I go to hug her, and I'm still thinking, you know, what am I going to say? And I say the only thing I can think of. And I'm like, I love you. I'll see you around. And she stops. And she looks me dead in the eye. And she says, I saw the videos. You're funny. Keep doing it. And, you know, that's, there's a reason I'm doing this. Hang on. That, you know, I, I hate to say it, but in theory, could be the last thing she says to me. And on one point, I want to thank everybody here for that moment that I could share. And to Angie, whether you can hear me or not, I, I don't know, but I want to say thank you for coming to the birthday party when I was younger that hardly anybody got to go to. And the second thing I want to say is whether you decide to stay and keep fighting or whether you decide to let go, if and when that time comes, I want you to save me a seat on that cruise ship in the sky, wherever you're going. But for right now, I just got to say, if anybody would like to join me, this one's for you. That still has sand on it from the beach, too. So again, Angie, I love you. And open stage, thank you for that moment. And good night, and thank you for listening.